Matt Yasa here. So where do you go to get your glass and lamp working supplies? Coming up on Glasssmith. Now before I talk about where I get my glass, I wanted to let you know I'm not sponsored or promoted by them in any way. So you get my honest opinion here. And that company would be mountainglass.com. They're one of the largest lamp working suppliers I've found so far. And you can order anything you need to start lamp working from there. Uh, however, although I do recommend getting your glass from there, I would look at the local hardware stores to see if you might be able to find something cheaper, especially the vent hood and certain tools. So I had a new subscriber comment recently. And I wanted to go over that here. And Wiley Racer said, just subbed. I love everything I've seen so far. Glass blowing is my dream job. I was wondering where I can buy a torch. Uh, PS, I'm 14, so money is limited. What can I expect to pay for something to get started? And that is a good question. Uh, a couple reasons I wanted to go over that. Being younger, you're going to have a more limited budget. It's gonna be harder starting out. You might have to save up or find a small part-time job or summer job to make up a little bit, bit of money. Uh, but once you do save and get the equipment, then all you have is your overhead costs. And the benefit of being younger is that you do have ample time to practice. So if you start at it now and really get at it, there's really no telling where you could take it, especially at 14. But then the other thing I wanted to get into was the costs you were asking about. So a starting torch, like a bead torch, or basically the center fire for this thing, is going to be 200 Now your didanium glasses are pretty expensive. The UV lenses usually aren't as expensive. You might be able to get them cheaper somewhere else. But 100 bucks would be kind of lowballing it. And then the hoses, uh, you need the flashback arresters. Again, 100 bucks. Now for the propane tanks, most people will use barbecue tanks. And those new will be about 50 bucks. And then to exchange it, it should only be about 15 bucks. Now I'm gonna over budget a little bit on ventilation just because that's important. I mean, you could get a, a super powerful fan, like $150 one, and then make your own hood and connections for like 50 bucks. And starting out for practice, you really don't need a lot of glass. You could just keep reusing a lot of the stuff you've done or keeps breaking on you, but shipping costs can be rather high. So it's always better to buy in bulk and a hundred dollars in raw glass really isn't that much when you're talking production or, you know, the professional level. Then for tools starting out, I did make a, a tool video. You basically want just some tweezers, a graphite rod, a graphite pad. You can increase and make more tools as the process goes. Your hands are really the best tools you can get and the, the ones you're gonna study with the most. And now the oxygen, you're gonna have to call a local supplier and ask them pretty much how much it's gonna cost to rent a tank, how much to refill it. It's definitely gonna be more expensive than the propane. You go through the oxygen at a much quicker rate but then another option for a longer term investment in oxygen would be to go with an oxygen concentrator, which can start easily at $1,000. But in the long run could be a better investment for a 10 liter per minute. And that'll run your smaller torch, the bead torch, uh, for years to come. But they're rated for, I think, 20 to 25,000 hours. So you should be able to get years of use out of that. It does run on five amps of electricity, so it might depend on where you live to see if it's more of a cost-effective option. For me, it definitely is. And then lastly, your kiln, which should be your last purchase. Now, I do recommend practicing a little bit before you jump into that because it is a long-term decision you're making. What you're making is gonna determine the size of the kiln you need. But when you do get ready to start selling your products, you definitely want to going to run them through a kilning cycle. You don't want your products breaking on your customers. So a basic but solid lamp working kit should run you about 780, not including the oxygen. You can reduce it a little bit to 580 by blowing glass outside, which you won't need ventilation. 
and then to go the auction concentrator route, which you're basically buying all your auction in advance, could run you up to about 1700 to start, which is quite a lot to start out on. That's why it might be a good idea to check out how much those tanks will be, at least uh, to practice on and to see how long a tank will last you. But that is also why it's an investment. For solid rods, a seven and nine millimeter rod will work for your punties and drawing clear glass. And a 28 millimeter solid rod, especially for marbles or paperweights. And the reason I go a 28 millimeter is because they only put four in a case. So it's pretty cheap case overall. Whereas this one, they put like a hundred or 150 in there and it's pretty expensive case. For your blow tubes, glass on glass, even punties, a 12.5 millimeter works well. Heavy wall, a 26 millimeter for your larger projects and 50 millimeter for your even larger projects. Both heavy walls, about four millimeters thick. Now we'll look at your colored rods. You have first quality, which is the best. Second quality, which might have imperfections, might have air, bubbles, or the color might be off a little bit. And then lastly, odds, which just means it's first quality glass, but the rod is oddly shaped. Now starting out for practice, you could go with second quality just to save a little bit of money. But when it comes to making chains and other high quality products, I'll go with the first quality glass. But then for everything else that doesn't need a properly shaped rod, I go with the odds. And speaking of odds, I just ordered a new box today. Now another reason I do like to shop at Mountain Glass Arts is for their sales. They'll do a monthly and weekly sale and they put their glass on sale all the time. So let's see what I have here. So I've got about six pounds of glass here in odds. Let's see, I've got the double Mai Tai from the last video, heavy blue leprechaun, that's a sparkly blue, a turbo cobalt, which is a very, very dark blue. It can be used instead of black, where black is very heat sensitive. And then lastly, red Elvis here, which just looks clear. It has copper in it. When I hit it with that flame, it'll turn red and white out, just white color. You'll be seeing the white and the red coming up in the Millie or Marini episode. And right now would actually be a good time to order some glass there because they put these odd rods, these discounted rods on sale, along with Pyrex glass, which is 45% off for that. So I wanted to do a quick demo to show you what kind of sized work you should expect from that $200 torch. Now I have been calling it a bead torch, but it can definitely do a lot more than just beads. You can really make and practice almost anything you want. However, it's gonna be on a slightly smaller scale. And I'll be using just the center fire on this torch. That is the same as the smaller torches. The outer fire has 12 more ports, so it'll end up doubling my flame size. And that's why I like these multi-stage torches. You can adjust the flame size to match the size of glass you're working. With that first stage, you can get a very small flame for detail work. And then with both stages, you can get a large encompassing flame to blow out a big bubble. So I ended up laying down some white dots. I'm gonna melt those in and then lay down some of that blue leprechaun over it. And after I lay down one dot, I'll rotate around to lay a dot on the opposite side. And then I'll do a quarter turn for the next one and rotate it all the way around again. And this just keeps the heat more even in the piece instead of laying them down all in a row one after the other. Now I did talk about buying the 50 millimeter tube and the 28 millimeter rod, but I was thinking for a flame this size, those might be a little too large. For a smaller torch, I would stick with the 26 millimeter heavy wall and then maybe an 18 millimeter rod. And now I laid down four straight lines. My camera turned off on me before I could catch it but I'm gonna go ahead and heat that area up and start to twist it. And then right before your eyes, those straight lines become curved. And I always thought this was a cool effect in lamp working. You never have to draw curved lines. Instead, you draw straight lines and curve the piece. 
You know, I'll switch over to that more pinpoint flame and heat up one area of the glass and start to push in both directions to create a nice hollow disc. This is more of a traditional technique they call Maria's. You can make a hollow or a solid Maria. It is more of a decorative technique, but it does help the glass from melting back when you're taking off the blow tube. And I'll heat up that area where the dots are at, let it radiate for a few seconds before I blow into it to expand out a nice bubble. I'll heat it back up and blow it out again, and that'll help even out the walls, make sure it's the same thickness all the way around. Now this is a nice sized bubble. You could try to make it a little bigger, but it gets harder the bigger it gets on the small torch and it ends up becoming more time consuming with a smaller flame. I'll go ahead and flatten out the bottom there so that it'll sit up on my desk. And then take off my blow tube, I just pop a little hole and then flame cut the rest of it off. You'll see that Maria helps the glass from gathering back too far and it'll end up making a nice lip. And then I'll flare it open a little bit more and flatten it and this little flower vase is done. It'll go in the kiln at 1050 for 30 minutes. And here's a little vase I made. I'm liking it. I like the spiral coming down and then that Maria really gives it a good touch. And that'll do it for this video. This is Matt Yasa. Thank you for watching and have a great day.